Water is a priceless natural resource, a vital part of our daily lives. It forms the clouds that generate rain and snow, provides sources of power, a way of transportation, and endless hours of recreation. Without water, life as we know it would quickly vanish. The water we find in lakes, streams, rivers, rain, and snowfall is the water we see and understand best. More mysterious is the water that lies hidden beneath our feet, a vast resource called groundwater. Groundwater makes up 96% of the world's total freshwater supply. Half the United States population depends upon groundwater for daily needs. In Missouri, one-third of the water we use for agriculture, manufacturing, recreation, and domestic needs comes from underground sources. Groundwater lies hidden until it finds a way to the surface through natural means or until man draws it up. For this reason, groundwater is not easily examined. Its quality not easily monitored. It is often taken for granted and is widely misunderstood. Myth has it that Missouri groundwater comes from distant sources like the Rocky Mountains. That groundwater is stored in a vast network of endless caves. That it rushes beneath us as some dark nameless subterranean river. That all of it is so far below the surface it is safe from the pollutants we create the fact is, Missouri groundwater comes from Missouri. Most of the groundwater we use at home originates within a few miles of where we live. Nature and man recycle it continuously. Missouri is famous for thousands of caves and Ozark Springs. Underground streams and lakes do exist in Missouri caves, but very little groundwater is stored this way. Instead, it is stored in layers of bedrock and deposits of gravel and other sediment. Rock formations and sediment deposits capable of absorbing, storing, and transmitting groundwater efficiently are called aquifers. Groundwater does not move rapidly through most aquifers. Normally, it travels only a few feet each year. Only when the water is being drawn by pumping or when it encounters open crevices and cave systems within an aquifer can it travel greater distances in shorter time. Groundwater is often hundreds of feet beneath us when we stand on hilltops or plateaus. Beneath floodplains and valley floors, groundwater is close to the surface. The interrelationships between surface water and groundwater are intimate. Each depends upon the other. No body of groundwater is completely safe from contamination. Man changes the landscape to suit his own needs, sometimes not pausing to consider whether such alterations are environmentally safe. We have buried thousands of tanks below ground and filled them with flammable and toxic liquids. We have converted our landscape into a pincushion of well shafts sunk into the earth. Each tank, each well shaft, is a potential source of groundwater contamination. Modern technology has created an exotic world of chemistry. Since the 1940s, more than 60,000 chemicals have been created in laboratories that are now used in our homes and industry. Many of the products we use daily contain hazardous substances. Some are highly toxic, so potent that only a few drops can poison a major city's water supply. Groundwater aquifers simply cannot neutralize all of these powerful substances. A contaminated aquifer is difficult and costly to clean up. Sometimes, purification is not practical. A polluted aquifer may remain poisoned for decades. Human ignorance and carelessness can contaminate groundwater supplies and aquifers in a variety of ways. Preventing contamination is the key to protecting the quality of our water. Examining the groundwater mechanisms that function in our natural environment and becoming familiar with the regional differences in Missouri's geology 
are good ways to begin learning how to keep our groundwater clean. Nature replenishes groundwater supplies as part of a sequence of events that scientists call the hydrological cycle. Sunlight and the heat it generates evaporates water from the surface of the earth. Plants also release some moisture into the air through a process called transpiration. This vapor rises to form clouds. Contact with colder air above the earth condenses the vapor and it falls as rain or snow. In Missouri, the precipitation rate averages about 40 inches per year. Rainfall may flow downhill as runoff into lakes and streams, be absorbed by plants or soak into the ground. Under the pull of gravity, water moves downward through open spaces and crevices in soil and rock until it reaches the water table. The water table is the upper limit of a zone completely saturated with water. All openings between particles of rock and soil in this zone are filled with water. This is where nature stores groundwater. The elevation of the water table fluctuates from season to season as the volume of groundwater rises or falls when it is replenished through rainfall and snowmelt or depleted by drought and withdrawal through wells. Eventually, groundwater returns to the surface in valleys. Exposure to the sun and heat causes evaporation. Clouds accumulate, the rains return, and the cycle begins again. In this way, the water is cleansed, the earth is freshened, the land is reshaped, and our water supplies are renewed. Rock and sediment layers that form aquifers differ in thickness, in composition, and in their ability to absorb and transmit water. Geologists use the term permeability to describe the way groundwater moves through aquifers. Some rocks, such as shale, are highly porous, but the pores or openings between grains of the rock are so small that water cannot move readily. Some clay and rock formations have extremely minute pores. Water can be stored in them, but not readily transmitted. This type of formation is said to be highly porous, but not very permeable. Aquifers are permeable formations. Some are sandwiched between impermeable layers of clay or rock. These are confined aquifers. They are often deeply buried and protected from most contamination. Unconfined aquifers do not have the protection of impermeable rock or sediment above them. They usually are close to the surface and vulnerable to pollution. Missouri's landscape is highly diverse. We have glaciated plains, marshy lowlands, prairie highlands, and the rugged mountainous hill country of the Ozarks. These regions show vastly different geological histories. Geologists have divided Missouri into groundwater regions. These include the river floodplains, the Ozarks, the St. Francis Mountains region, the Osage Salt Plains, and the Glaciated Plains. The quality and quantity of groundwater differs from one to another. Missouri has an abundance of streams and rivers. The wide flood plains, marshy wetlands, and bottomlands of the major rivers mark them as a river flood plains region. The southeast lowlands of the Boot Hill are included because the broad flat landscape is the result of a long history of sediment deposits by the Mississippi River. These sediments are called alluvium. In the river floodplains region, the waterways have been depositing sand, gravel, clay and silt for thousands of years. Beneath this mixture of sediments are older layers of bedrock. The rivers replenish the groundwater supplies. The aquifers along major rivers often yield groundwater in vast quantity. Even though it may be hard water, its quality generally is good. Wells usually are shallow, drawing from unconfined sand and gravel aquifers near the surface. The Ozarks, covering most of southern Missouri, is a region famous for caves, forested hills, beautiful scenery, and spring-fed streams. 
water-bearing limestone, dolomite, and sandstone aquifers are stacked on top of each other in many portions of the Ozarks, creating what could be called super aquifer country. Municipal wells commonly yield 500 to 1,000 gallons per minute when drilled to depths of 1,000 feet or more. In the Ozark region, topsoils are thin, coarse, and rocky. Hills are steep, the valleys narrow. Here, aquifers are predominantly unconfined in deeply weathered, soluble bedrock riddled with cracks, crevices, and channels. The ancient Cambrian and Ordovician rocks are often pitted by karst. The term karst denotes areas where groundwater has dissolved part of the bedrock, resulting in sinkholes and losing streams that connect surface and groundwater resources. Caves and springs are typical karst features. Located in the heart of the southeastern Ozarks are the St. Francis Mountains. These hard, ancient Precambrian knobs and ridges expose the oldest rocks in Missouri and reach the state's highest elevations. The igneous rocks of the St. Francis Mountains are poor aquifers. Water-bearing limestone and dolomite layers are thin, isolated deposits surrounded and underlain by dense, impermeable igneous rock. The Glaciated Plains region lies north of the Missouri River. This region includes almost all of northern Missouri. The gently rolling farmland of the Glaciated Plains is noted for its agricultural heritage. Glaciers covered the land during the Ice Age, before the arrival of man in North America. When the ice sheets receded, deep accumulations of glacial drift were left behind. This material is composed of sand, gravel, clay, silt, and boulders. In places, the glacial drift is hundreds of feet thick, burying a pre-glacial terrain of rolling hills and meandering river valleys. The glacial drift is usually a poor aquifer and produces very small amounts of water. Higher yields can sometimes be obtained by tapping the old alluvial aquifers in ancient stream valleys now buried by glacial till. Water quality deteriorates with depth in northern Missouri because water moves slowly through bedrock that contains high concentrations of salt and sulfate minerals. This prolonged contact produces water that is undrinkable because of its odor and taste. Often, it is unsuitable for other uses as well. Between northern and southern portions of the state is a transition region where highly mineralized waters of northern Missouri meet the fresh waters of southern Missouri. This area is known as the Osage Salt Plains region. Shallow wells yield small amounts of fresh water, while deeper wells usually produce highly mineralized water. The most significant threats to Missouri groundwater include leaking septic tanks, farm animal wastes, chemical fertilizers and pesticides, leaking underground storage tanks, accidental spills and leaks resulting from train derailments and truck accidents, abandoned wells, and inadequately cased, poorly sealed wells. Floodplains often comprise our richest farmlands. Animal waste, chemical fertilizers, pesticides, untreated human waste from septic tanks, and landfill leachate all threaten water quality in the river floodplains region. Similar problems exist in the glaciated plains region and Osage Salt Plains border country. Natural underground drainage systems are extensive and well developed in the Ozarks region. Water enters the ground rapidly and may emerge from springs or wells in bedrock. Contaminants that reach groundwater aquifers in the Ozarks region may threaten human health and water quality. Missouri's groundwater is influenced by both natural conditions and by human activities. As groundwater use increases, the need to protect its availability and quality also increases. Protection depends as much upon individual effort and citizen participation as it does upon government action. Missouri has a groundwater protection strategy that will define contaminant sources, determine groundwater quality standards, 
and lead to protective regulations if we all lend a hand in its implementation. We must control and restrict the discharges of wastes in areas of karsts, losing streams, and groundwater recharge. Underground storage tanks must be regulated and carefully maintained to safeguard against leakage. Care must be used in constructing wells and installing septic tanks and wastewater facilities. It is essential to the well-being of our hidden groundwater resources that all Missouri citizens be aware of the effects their actions have upon the aquifers over which they live and work. Groundwater has helped shape Missouri's varied and interesting landscape, its history, and its industry. How we manage this hidden resource today will shape the quality of life that lies in our future.